This short movie is to explain the user interface for Revit 2013. I can double click on the icon to launch the product or I could go to the Windows Start menu and launch it from there. But when the product opens up, the first screen that you're going to see has two main areas on it. Uh, one is titled as Projects and the other is titled as Families. So when it opens up here, you'll see that on the top I've got a really a history of the files that I've been working with. It shows me the last four projects that I've been working in. You can see them here, solar house, roof. Um, the projects part of this panel is what we would start with. We're going to create a project for uh, purposes of developing an interior. And uh, we can start by saying, you know, open an existing project, create a new project, or we can use a template file. I mean, in our case, we'll use the architectural template file to get started. If you've got uh, four projects listed here, you can always retrieve a project by clicking on the, the graphic that, that was the save view of the last project that you were in. So if I, if I were to click on it, that would open the project. Projects are a single database, and what you'll see as I explain the interface is that when you've got a virtual model that you've created, you can very quickly create additional views of that model that are sections, elevations, schedules, 3D views, camera views. Um, so you're, you're actually reaping the benefits of having a single database from which you can extract multiple views of your, of your model for purposes of construction documentation or presentation. Below the projects panel is a families area. The families are really the equivalent of uh, blocks in AutoCAD, uh, but a lot more powerful. Uh, they are for situations where you want to create something that isn't delivered with the product. So maybe if you don't have a operating table or you don't have a piece of furniture of a particular type and you can't find it on a website uh, or through looking at Autodesk Seek and looking for the, the pro product online, uh, those loadable families are something that you can create from templates that are specific to family types. Our main focus is going to be the actual project and in particular the architectural uh, template is what we're going to use. I'm going to open the solar house so I can I can click double click sorry on the, the icon there to open the project and explain the pieces of the interface that you can see. So top left is what's called the application menu. That application menu uh, has a black down arrow displayed on it which is an indication that there's additional options below it. You'll see that same black arrow is, is featured many places on the interface itself that indicates that there are additional choices. If I, if I click on the, the interface here, you'll see what are called the file-related commands. I'm going to try and just move those around a bit so you can see what's on here. Uh, but they're mostly, you know, create a new project or a new family, save your project, which you want to do uh, frequently. Uh, we're going to set a timer in a minute that will remind you every 15 minutes. Save as if you're going to give it a different name. Uh, export is mostly about moving content between one product and another, which we're not going to be interested in at the moment. New in 2013, Suite Workflows is actually making like a direct connection between animation projects and other other software that's part of the building uh, design suite. Uh, where again, we're going to focus just primarily on what you can do inside Revit architecture. So if I just click on the screen to clear that, app, the application menu is the option on the top left and it's file related. The option beside it is what's called the quick access toolbar. The purpose of this being there is that these are your frequently used commands. And you'll see a lot of repetition, right? Here, for example, is the third way that we've seen of creating a new project or of opening a project or of saving a project. But the point of these is that you, you can get to these commands with one click while you're in the, pro, the project file itself. So, I mean, if somebody said to you that I've got a way of making you twice as efficient 
uh, you would jump at it. In this case, it might seem insignificant to, to do something like say, well, I want to go to the Manage tab and I want to click on Material, so it's two clicks. The point is that if I can right click and say add that to the quick access toolbar, if this is something that I'm using all the time, so what I've done is actually add it to the quick access toolbar, then, then I can now get to it with one click. One, I don't have to remember where it was on a series of menus that uh, aren't always visible. And two, I can get to it in one click. It makes me twice as efficient as, as uh, having to pick my way through menu options to find the command itself. Now my, my resolution in recording changes the interface a little bit so you can't see the entire quick access toolbar but if you look at it you'll see I've got undo and redo you know frequently used as I work I've got measure I've got uh, dimension and I've got a uh, um, create a section or open other windows and what I've done now is I've said add to that the materials when I want to create materials so instead of me having to hunt and look for that I can click and get immediately the dialogues that I need for the creation of materials so let me just close those um, very fast very efficient a good way to work on the middle of my screen and again if you're looking at yours on a normal size screen you would see the title of the project that you're in, Zero One Solar, and then beside it you'd also see the name of the view that you're you're looking at. Um, you can have multiple projects open at the same time, and you can have multiple windows open at the same time. More on that later. To the right of this is the uh, option that's called the Info Center. So really, from this location on to uh, the end of here is the, the information center. This is where you can uh, type in something that you're looking for and click search the binoculars and see if you can get information. All I'm going to point out at the moment is the help option, which is the question mark. That's also the F1 key. So if you want to access help online and it's wiki help, so it's, it's, uh, it's help that is stored on the internet and you're bringing up the help file when you you click on that, that item. Uh, this here has information on a particular topic and if for example I was to type something in say um, a, a, a particular command it'll give me uh, options to explain what they are and, and how you use them. Let me close that. Uh, an option that I'll deal with later is uh, that now you can access content on Autodesk 360. This is a, a revolutionary change in the way the product works. This will let me do things like render my model to create photorealistic images of the inside of my building, but do it on the internet rather than on my laptop, and I'll show more on that later on. If I want to close the product, I can do it here, or uh, maximize, minimize, but th these three options are for the product itself. Where you see them in a view, that's for an individual view. Remember you can have multiple views open. The next part of the interface is the ribbon. The ribbon really extends from up here, the, what are called the tabs, down to these options, build, model, circulation, they're referred to as panels. So if you notice, the architecture tab has most of your building components listed on it and you'll probably use that about 80% of the time to create building components such as windows, columns, roofs, ceilings, floors. There's a catch-all category in here called the component which could be furniture, people, plants. It's, it's anytime there's not an individual command that says you know build a window or build a ceiling then it's the component uh, command that you want to look at because remember the black arrow is indicating that you've got choices underneath and that the uh, the component is anything not listed on that build panel such as furniture such as power symbols such as trees those kind of things uh, tabs themselves 
are groupings of commands according to function. So just as you can see that building the built the three D building is is shown here. Uh, modeling is is shown uh, like creating three dimensional text. Uh, circulation stairs and railings. So they're grouped according to function. The, the the two most important building components or building elements that you draft are probably de are the datum elements called levels and grids, and we'll talk more of that later on. But what I want you to see is that right now the interface itself, this ribbon, looks a little complex because it's got a lot of tabs on it. It's got structural, it's got building systems. And I want to simplify that so we only have architectural symbols showing on our screen. The way I do that is I go to the application menu. I go to the options. And if I look under that first tab, under general, um, I want to get reminders to save my project. And if you're starting in Revit, I would switch this to, say, 15 minutes so that at, at intervals of a maximum of 15 minutes, you're going to get a reminder that, that says, uh, do you want to save your project? You click yes, it makes a backup, which it appends with a number, 001. Uh, if you've already got a 001, 002. But it, then it continues in the current project so that you can continue to work with the knowledge that you've already got, a file that can act as a backup. User interface is where I want to simplify my, my, uh, my tabs. So. It says architectural tab and tools, structural tab and tools. All I need to do is remove the checkbox from the, I don't want the structure, I don't want building systems, I don't want massing in sight either, and I don't want energy analysis. So when I've checked those off, I'm really ready to go into my project and uh, start work. So watch the if you watch the tab on the top left here, you'll see that when I click OK, it simplifies the the tabs that are part of my interface. Uh, one other option that a lot of people use, especially advanced users, under the View tab um, and under User Interface, and it's extremely easy to uh, to accidentally turn off the ribbon. The User Interface here lets me put a checkbox beside the parts of the in the user interface that I want to see, but it also lets me create keyboard shortcuts for individual commands. So um, any command that I issue by clicking on it in the in the window here can also be accessed by a shortcut. For example, the one shown here is for the properties palette, which is this option here. It shows that PP will turn it on and or toggle it off. So when I, when I hit click PP or Control One or VP, it's going to af affect the visibility of that palette. You can take any of the uh, commands that are listed in here, and you can so say DI for dimension. You can add your own keyins if they are unique. You'll be allowed to add them to the to the file itself. You can then export your entire file as an XML file or import your XML file. So if you went to another workstation, you'd be able to load the, the keyboard shortcuts and use them on that workstation. Um, as I work, I'll try and call out the options that are there. You will see them listed. So for example, under wall, you see WA is the shortcut. Under door, DR under window WN. Uh, not all of them list a shortcut. Right? But you can you can add anything that you want to make your life easier. 